Hey everybody, I'm Chris Francis and I'm a DP director here in San Diego, California. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at this little guy right here. It's the Canon C70. When Canon announced that the C70 would have the exact same sensor as the C300 Mark III, and come in at almost half the price, I immediately thought this would make a perfect B camera for me. My hunch is that it would work great on a gimbal like the new Ronin RS2, and that the image out of the camera would match perfectly to my C300 Mark III on two camera shoots. Or would it? After my first shoot with both cameras, I felt like things were a little off, so I decided to run some tests. For my first test, I lined up the C300 Mark III right next to the C70, and I used the standard Canon RF to EF adapter. And I put the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lenses on both cameras, dialed in the exact same settings, and then I let them run for 30 minutes, and then black balanced both of them, and then hit record. All right, so here we have our first clip on the C300 Mark III. We're shooting YDR production camera, 410 megabytes per second. And here is the exact same shot, exact same settings on the Canon C70. And here's both clips side by side. Um, I thought these cameras had the same sensor and the same color science. I couldn't figure out what was going on. No matter what identical settings I used, the cameras never matched. But I soon found out that I had made a critical mistake in my test, and one that I think is really important to share for anyone who wants to do camera tests. Even though I used the same lens on both cameras, two different copies of the same exact lens, and especially if it's not a high-end cinema lens, can actually vary from each other quite a bit, and apparently enough to throw off a camera test. When doing a test, if you want the most accurate results, you need to limit your variables and just test one thing at a time. So if you're doing a test like me of two cameras, you need to use the exact same lens, the same copy of the same lens on both cameras and do your tests one at a time and not side by side. Luckily, my friend Caleb Wojcik loaned me not one, but two of his Canon C70s so I could redo all my tests. So for this round of testing, I compared the C300 Mark III, the C70, and the C70 with the 7.1 Canon RF to EF adapter. Since the .71 adapter has a glass element, I wanted to see if and how it affected the image quality. So for round two, I also used the nicer Canon EF 50mm f1.2 L series lens on all three cameras for this round of testing. I also added an X-Rite video color checker into the mix so I could get the perfect white balance reference point and so I could also see exactly what each camera was doing when it was processing its colors. Once again, I let all three cameras run for over 30 minutes before performing a black balance. I was in a completely controlled environment with no windows at all. And to confirm that I was using all the exact same settings, I even ran a second camera to record exactly what my first camera was doing to ensure that no settings got overlooked or accidentally changed. I also reset all of the picture profiles to the factory settings to make sure there were no customizations accidentally flying under the radar on me. Now I tested each camera in YDR, C-Log2, and C-Log3, and within each one of those settings, I tested all of the different color matrices, neutral, production camera, and video, because I wanted to find out exactly what was going on. I also recorded tests in RAW on the C300 Mark III as well to see how that compared. Now, in an effort to make this video not any longer than it already is, the following examples will be with the neutral color matrix, and I'll cover the other color matrices in another video. And sometimes it's hard to see on YouTube the differences, so we're gonna do side-by-sides. And here's the same clip for reference. And here's the C70. I've also boosted the saturation on all of these clips so it's a little more obvious on YouTube what's happening. 
And here's the C70 with the 0.71X adapter. All right, so I have a hunch of what's going on there, but I wanna find out exactly what's going on there. So I took the video checker on the white balance side and exposed all three cameras to middle gray 18% so I could get the most color information into that zone to then pull an accurate white balance. And as you can see here, here's all three cameras, what they're looking like on the RGB waveform. And I'm just gonna boost the saturation to 200% to exaggerate what's going on here so it's easier to see. And then if I adjust the tint, I can adjust the green and magenta levels. And if I do the temperature slider, I can adjust the blue and red channels and try to get those balanced to where it's mostly white there. So I'm just gonna run through and do that on the other two cameras really quickly. And then once we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the saturation back down to 100% on all the cameras. And they're looking about the same there. And this is what they were before I did anything. The C300 Mark III is running a little blue up top there. C70, the red is starting to take over. And the 7.1X adapter is running super red. And here's what we did on the sliders to get each camera back to neutral white. So if we look back to our original clips, here we are at the C300 Mark III, completely neutral. This is non-color corrected. This is exactly how it came out of the camera. So in order to get the C70 to match, we had to come down on the coolness 3.3 and towards green on the tent by 1.3. And then with the 0.71 adapter, it actually made the image a lot warmer. So we had to come negative eight on the temperature towards the blue but we actually had to go more back to the magenta 2.7. And here's all three clips side by side, uh, just using the temperature sliders and tint sliders to match the C70s to the C300 Mark III image. Now these aren't exactly perfect, but it does give you a big picture idea of how each camera is processing the colors differently. And just for reference, let me show you what this looks like on the vector scope for each camera when they are not color corrected. Now, if you look these dots, if they were perfectly balanced, that white spot would be perfectly in the middle. But we can see that the C300 is leaning towards the magenta, classic Canon. And then the C70 is starting to go towards the warmer side of the spectrum. And then once we add the 0.71X adapter, it's going even further over into the red zone. All right, obviously the white balance card is not gonna give us much information on the vector scope. So let's hop in here to the color chart for all three cameras. Now looking at these vector scopes is gonna give us a lot more accurate information as to how each camera is processing the colors. Once again, we're gonna start with the C300 Mark III and treat that as our baseline. And when we shift to the C70, all of the colors move towards the red magenta side of things. And once we add the 0.71X adapter into the mix, we can see that the whole image shifts towards the yellow. So it's getting warmer, but it's also shifting a little bit towards the green and away from the magenta. Also, if you look at the lines that's going to the yellow channel and the magenta channel, I don't exactly know why that line is fanning out wider. So if you know what that means, please leave me a comment below to let me know what's up. Now I ran a ton of tests, but I'll just try to share the most interesting results for this video. When I ran through all the other settings, I found the same consistencies across the board. But one thing that I found both interesting and annoying was that if you shoot any of these three cameras in C-Log2 or C-Log3, and then put the corresponding Canon provided LUT on them in post to bring the image back to YDR, they never match the YDR that comes installed in the camera. Now, if you look here, this is the official Canon LUT that matches the camera settings perfectly, but it doesn't matter which camera it is. It's the same difference. As you see here, the C-Log3 and the C-Log2 are matching perfectly when you put the LUT on them but neither are matching the YDR LUT that is installed in the camera. 
To me it looks like it's treating the colors the same, but the levels aren't matching. My main takeaway here is that Canon has clearly updated the LUTs that they're installing in their camera, but have not updated the LUTs that you can download and add in post-production. And just for kicks, let's see how the LUT works with the raw clip. And here's a side-by-side -side that further shows the inconsistencies with how the Canon LUTs are being applied in camera versus in post. Same camera, same lens, correct LUTs, and none of them match. Now, they're not terribly off, and I'd be curious to see how different these are actually gonna look on YouTube, but if we look at the waveforms, compared to the in-camera YDR clip, you can see that the colors look the same on the C-Log2 clip in the middle, but the levels are darker. And then when we look at the raw clip, we see that the levels are closer to the C-Log2 clip, but when we look at that big line going across the waveform between the 40 and 50 IRE range, we can see that the colors are being processed a little differently when we're looking at the magenta and red balance. All right, phew, who needs a break? Now, based on the other tests I've seen online, I expected the sharpness between the two cameras to be the same since they both have the same sensor, same compression and data rates when you're shooting in normal frame rates like 2398. I didn't see anything in these tests that changed my opinion on that but I was interested to see if there was a noticeable image quality drop when shooting in the higher frame rates in slow and fast modes, because the C300 Mark III can remain in 410 megabytes per second all eye at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second, but the C70 has to drop down to less than half the bit rate to 160 megabytes per second, and it has to switch to long gop compression instead of all eye. All right, and looking at these clips side by side, full screen, they really look the same to me. I'm really struggling to be able to tell a quality difference between the two. Even when we punch in here and we see some motion in the hair, I'm not seeing any artifacting or any compression doing anything weird. And just for reference, let's put both cameras at their highest quality compression and compare it to the C300 RAW. When we zoom in to 250%, we can see that the RAW clip is clearly sharper, but it's also a little noisier, which is to be expected since it's RAW. So after all these tests, I have four big takeaways. Number one, I found it surprising how much a different copy of the same lens can drastically change the quality of your image, and that alone makes me wanna start investing in better glass and taking that more seriously. Number two, unless you're shooting raw on the C300 Mark III or are zooming in 300% on slightly out of focus chair fabric in a slow motion shot, in practical real world use, the C70 is every bit as good as the C300 Mark III when it comes to image quality. Also, I was really shocked that there's almost no discernible image quality drop when going from the 410 megabyte all eye compression to the 160 megabyte long gop compression. And I never thought I would say this, but I'm seriously considering switching to long gop compression for most of my projects because the quality is still great and it produces file sizes that are less than half the size of the 410 megabyte all eye compression. Number three, if you're gonna mix these cameras on a multi-cam shoot, you are going to have to do some work with the colors, either in camera or in post-production to get these cameras to match. Now, even though the C70 has the same sensor as the C300, it's clearly processing its colors differently than the C300. And although the differences may appear minor, the scopes and the waveform prove that something is off. Also, it's clear that the 0.71X adapter also causes an additional color shift in the image as well. And number four, my final takeaway is that Canon definitely, definitely needs to update its LUTs for post-production. It's very clear that the wide DR LUT in these cameras is doing something differently than the wide DR LUT that Canon is providing for post-production. All right, well, that's all I've got for this video. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Also stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'm gonna dive into all of the different Canon color matrixes and show you exactly what they do so you can make informed decisions on your Canon cinema cameras. Also, special thanks to Caleb Wojcik for loaning me his C70s, so go check out his YouTube channel and show him some love.